Well, we're north of Arno Bay today, and uh, Chris Kluver and I have come up here to try and catch some of the local sand whiting, not the King George whiting, but a local uh, yellowfin whiting. And one of the gun baits is a, is a worm that's found underneath these huge carpets of seaweed that are just washed up and decaying on the foreshore. So apparently, Chris, we've got to get in there, dig around, get, our hands dirty get, and... get into the mulch and see if we can find some. Let's go. We have to part the seaweed away, dig down sort of into this uh, mulchy type of stuff above the sand, and that's where, the, that's where they are. They do look a lot like a, just like a common earthworm, a garden worm. A bit paler, but apparently they're a gun bait for the local whiting. So uh, hopefully we'll put that to the test real soon. This just sort of flaky, crumbly stuff. There you expose go. the mulch on top of the sand. Yeah, it? just that. Just like that. Just like a little common garden worm or earthworm. A little bit paler, but apparently the whiting just love them. And that's all you got to do is get down under that weed to the top sand layer where the weed's broken down and they should be sitting under it. Collect as many as you need for the day and hopefully the whiting follow suit. And they'll ball up and knock together. The water's unbelievably clear. Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. Alright Fuzz, it looks like a great day for whiting. We've We're got the bait. We're halfway there. We've got the worms. Now we've got to get the fish. What have we done? We've done... Uh, Two flights, a couple of car trips. So a good 12 hours travel plus a, an overnight rest. Dug in the dirt for worms. Yeah, dug in the dirt for worms. Freighting through the scrub. And here we are. Apparently, whiting hasn't. So what we've got here is a is a bit of a dig where the whiting have come in here when the tide's higher and are actually digging in the very mud that we're traipsing through now to get to the water. So in a few hours there'll probably be fish actually over this very flat having a feed. We've done a couple of plane trips and a couple of car trips with some of the local guys, Fuzz and Buff, and got Ian here with me and the guys are using bait. I've grabbed one of the new soft plastic Raider rods. And um, the boys reckon they're hard to get on plastics, but there's nothing wrong with the old bloodworm wriggler with a bit of uh, S factor. And there you have it, a lovely South Australian sand whiting. Guys behind me are using bait, I'm sure they'll be into them shortly. Here he comes, he's going it again. I'm going to try an 80 mil bloodworm wriggler. The last fish I got was on 100 mil. The boys reckon they're pretty hard to catch on plastics, and I've got them 1 nil so far. So, and I've hooked another couple. Another stingray just that stingray's just sitting on the bottom there. Oh it's just just going good now. Yeah, she's flooding in nicely. There you go, bites. There he is. Let's see if another one might jump on here. A patch of little fish here. There's a whole school of little fish here. We just need them to get a bit bigger. 
tide's really starting to flood its way in and, and uh, we're following it back now up onto the mud that we walked in over and you can see these uh, small fish schooling you can just throw into them and they're all over the bait so we just we really just need them to get a bit bigger and then it'll be happy days what I'm using here is uh, the new rod in the dual rod range and it's a nibble tip rod it's got a very lightweight high visibility tip so when the fish is nibbling on there be it a brim or a whiting you can see it actually being uh, dragged down by the fish it's just a bit of a visual aid for when you're fishing you don't have to actually hold the rod and, and feel the fish nibbling you can see the you can see the nibble tip working well we can catch as many of these little ones as we want here today really there's uh there's hundreds of them here in the shallows but uh they're not the fish we're after so i think we're going to make a move go to secret spot number two Hopefully the results here will be a little better. Still not convinced about the plastics not working on these whiting down here. This time, gone down to a size 4 hook, because they've got a small mouth and they're quite hard to hook. I've been getting a lot of bites in an 80 mil wriggler, a bit more bite size. But that's a lovely yellowfin whiting there. The guys are using a Paternoster rig with a bit of prawn and a bit of the weed worm we collected earlier. And I said to them, I said, I want to have a go with the plastics. I've got a few strange looks, but I'm having fun. That's a better quality fish, isn't it? Yeah, what, we've, what we've been catching, it's yeah. immediately you know it's a much better fish. Uh, we've been using both worms that we dug before, both those type of worms, and also prawn. This particular fish is on prawn. There you go, that's, that's a much better quality fish. Here's a new Starlo 732 with a Stratic 1000 CI4, one of the carbon infused reel. That was the prawn on the bottom. He is a beauty. Well, let's hope there's a few more. Salmon, like, like a little tom. That's what they call, uh, I think they call it a salmon trout. Yep. A bit like a juvenile Australian salmon. Quite common here in South Australia. Make excellent live bait for jewfish, snapper. Just a little wriggler. Quite common along the same sand flats that you get whiting. And eat wrigglers as well. So, good little bit of fun. That's more like it. We've come onto a, a new shoreline here, and the fish are a bit thicker, but it's pretty much the, uh, the sinker and the rig hitting the water, I think, is attracting them, and they're, they're coming straight in on the bait. That's a lot more like it. Nice sand whiting, that one. Taken on the, uh, on the the trailing hook which had a prawn bait on it and my front front hook which had a worm bait on it it's had a couple of nibbles but the prawn brought home the whiting this time 